Truncated cone resistor. A material of resistivity rho is formed into a solid truncated cone of height h and radii r1 and r2 at either end. So the r1 is on top, r2 is the radius at the bottom, the height is h. Part A. Calculate the resistance of the cone between the two flat end faces between these two ends and imagine slicing the cone into very many thin disks and calculate the resistance of one such disk. And part B show that your result agrees with resistance is equal to resistivity rho multiplied with length L divided by the cross-sectional area A when R1 is equal to R2. Okay, so let's take this suggestion and Divide this into slices of disks. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. And uh, I start the origin at the bottom end uh, so that I'm at a distance y uh, from the center of this cone, <coughs> the bottom uh, flat and center of this cone uh, for this disk. And the height of the uh, disk is going to be dy. Okay? Now, how can I write the resistance of this disk? Well, it's going to be dr, which is the resistivity of the material rho, the length of the uh, disk, which is going to be dy here. And then I have the cross-sectional area. So let's say that the, resist, uh, the radius of this disk is r. So the cross-sectional area will be pi r square. Pi r square. Now notice that the radius at y is equal to h. The top flat end is r1. And the radius when y is equal to 0, the bottom flat end is r2. So the resistance varies as a function of the distance from the bottom y linearly with that distance. So it is a y plus b and such that the resistance at y is equal to 0, which is equal to b, is r2 and the radius when y is equal to h the top flat end is a h plus b which is a h plus r2 is equal to r1 so this tells us that a the coefficient of y should be equal to r1 minus r2 divided by h all right so uh, we have obtained the radius as a function of distance from the bottom, r as a function of y, is equal to the coefficient a, which is r1 minus r2 divided by h multiplied with y plus r2. So we know how the radius varies as a function of y precisely. Now, what is the differential resistance dr? It is rho dy divided by pi r squared, which is pi. Let's keep a as a, and I will substitute at the end. It is a y plus r2 parentheses squared. So it is pi r squared. So for R, I substitute AY plus R2. Okay, now how can I find the total resistance? I can do that by integrating the dr values as Y varies between 0 and H dr. And this will be equal to integral from 0 to H rho dy rho dy divided by pi a y plus r2 parentheses 
squared. So I have to perform this integral. So how can I do this? Well, let's have u equal to ay plus r2. Okay, so transformation of variables du is then equal to a dy. In other words, dy is equal to du du divided by a. Okay, so if I go back to my integral, the resistance R, total resistance, is the integral from uh, for y is equal to 0 here, I have u is equal to R2. For y is equal to h, I have u is equal to, u is actually this uh, radius r here, it is r1. So this integral goes from r2 to r1. Uh, rho for dy, I substitute 1 over a du, du divided by pi u squared. So this gives me rho divided by a pi, the integral of du over u squared is 1 over minus 2 plus 1, so it is minus 1. Uh, u to the minus 2 plus 1, it is u to minus 1, so it is minus 1 over u. This will be evaluated between r1, r2, and r1. Okay? So, uh, if I take the derivative, u to minus 1 gives me a minus sign. This cancels. It becomes u to minus 2 uh, when I take the derivative. So it, it's going to be 1 over u squared. So that's basically what I will obtain here. Okay, so substituting the limits here, I find that the resistance is rho divided by a pi. Um, 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1. So if I operate the minus sign here, the limits change. So it becomes from r1 to r2. 1 over u from r1 to r2 is 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1. Now is the time to substitute for a r1 minus r2 over h. So I have on top here, rho times r1 minus r2. For a, I substitute r1 minus r2 divided by h. Then I have pi r1 r2. So I'm writing this with the common denominator, r1 minus r2 over r1 r2. And I also have an R1 minus R2 at the bottom. So these two will cancel out. And I will reach my uh, final answer uh, as, let's rewrite it here. R is equal to rho H divided by pi r1 r2. So that is the resistance of this truncated cone. Now in part b, uh, I will let r1 equals r2. So when r1 is equal to r2, you simply have this cylinder here. The cross-sectional area a length l so when I have this limit, R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R, then the resistance will become rho H divided by pi R1 R2, which will be pi R squared. So looking at this cylinder here, this is actually resistance equal to rho length 
divided by the area A, where the length is H, the cross-sectional area is pi r square. So indeed, I find that this result agrees with this uh, formula, this expression, r is equal to rho l over a, when r1 is equal to r2. Okay, so here we have a truncated cone resistor. The radius varies from r1 on the top flat end to r2 at the bottom flat end. The height of the cone is h. We want to know the total resistance between the top end and bottom end, and we want to show that this resistance agrees with the result rho L over A when R1 and R2 are equal. So for this purpose, we have divided into, uh, we divided this uh, truncated cone into disks where each disk center is at a distance Y from the bottom end and the height of the uh, disk here I call dy, the cross-sectional area is pi r square, and then the resistance of this uh, disk will be uh, just uh, rho dy over pi r squared. So basically this whole thing is actually covered with material, right? It's not empty. Uh, so the whole thing is covered with material. So uh, I can see that the resistance varies linearly from uh, bottom to top and I can find this by looking at the boundary conditions y equals 0 and y equals h and I can write the resistance as a function of y. And knowing the dr rho dy over pi r squared for r I substitute the uh, this expression r1 minus r2 over h y plus r2 this I called A, so I will keep it as A here. I integrate this from 0 to H to find the resistance with the substitution U is equal to AY over R, AY plus R2. Uh, I can find my final answer to be rho H over pi R1 R2. When R1 and R2 are equal, this becomes rho H over pi R squared rho h over pi r squared that is the resistance of a cylinder uh, whose length is h and cross-sectional area is pi r squared so this result agrees with this expression r is equal to rho l over a so basically i can see the correspondence here